Good morning. We are running just a couple of minutes behind trying to get all of our technical stuff taken care of. We want to welcome everyone who's here in person and all of those of you who are joining us live um, for our live stream online. We appreciate that. Happy Easter, everyone. Look at this beautiful, incredible day for Easter Sunday. I love that. Thank you, Jen. All right. So... Um, we are going to take just a couple of moments to kind of get centered and start here this morning. <laughs> I'm watching, watching cat maneuver around over here. So we're going to take just a couple of moments to, to get ourselves centered. Just take a moment to settle into your seat wherever you are. And if it feels comfortable to you to go ahead and close your eyes. And we're going to start with a nice deep breath in. And release. Feel the temperature in your room. the seat that you're sitting in. Feel your feet on the floor. We're going to breathe in with a five count and out with a five count. Take a nice deep breath in. for this moment. We're grateful for the opportunity to join together, whether that's in online or in person. We're grateful for this day to celebrate and spend time with our friends, with our families. We're grateful for all of the people who have been involved in the information that we're going to learn today. For the opportunity to know that when we know better, we can do better. And for the willingness to be able to incorporate these things into our daily lives so that we're conscious of our Mother Earth we're conscious of what we're leaving to our children. We're conscious of how the things that we do impact those around us. And we surround everything that we do with love. And so it is. Amen. Yeah. All right, so today we are going to talk more about recycling. You know, last year, last week, um, we talked about reduce and reuse and repurpose, which I've got my little I thing up here, my little earth guy, who says waste reduction is even better than recycling. So that was one of the things that we talked about last week is that how we ended up getting here where all of the emphasis was on recycling and how that happened, how the big corporations got together and decided, the, the big oil and gas corporations got together and decided that they were going to push this big recycling thing to make it our issue instead of theirs, and that way they continued, got to continue to produce one more plastic. So I'm just going to kind of go over that just a little bit more. So I watched this. I really, I really encourage you to get, you can get on YouTube, but that's where I watched this. It's called Plastic Wars. 
and wow, talk about a wealth of information to, to explain exactly how all of this happened and the ramifications of us just recycling. Um, so you can, you can watch that anywhere. So what happened was, in 1970, all of a sudden everyone woke up and went, wait a minute, this is not good. We are polluting our earth, and this is not sustainable. So in 1970, they had the first Earth Day march and protest. Over 20 million people showed up. That was 10% of the population of the United States at the time showed up to protest. So this shows you that this was a big deal, that there were a lot of people who recognized that we needed to do something different. Well, the thing is, though, the plastics organizations and decided, big oil and big gas decided, wait a minute, we really have a problem now. Because if this many people are having a fit about the, the plastics industry and pollution, we've got a problem, and our profit margins are going to drop drastically. So what they did was they developed the Council for Solid Waste Solutions. And it was based in Washington, D.C. All the big gas and oil companies were on the board of directors for this organization. And it claimed that its purpose was to promote recycling plastic products. <laughs> that was the claim, that that was what was going to happen. So they made this big ad campaign. How many of you remember this ad? The crying Indian pulled, pulled up, paddles up on a little canoe to a dirty, a dirty shore. Mm -hmm. And at the very end of it, somebody throws this bag of garbage out and it hits right at his feet. And then he turns around and says, people start pollution, people can stop it. So there's a huge ad campaign for making this about us and making it about we need to do something about this, not the manufacturer. And so recycling was born. And they came up with this symbol of the arrows, the chasing arrows, as a recycling. What they also did was they went to all of the states and they lobbied all. They lobbied the lawmakers and said, "What you need to do is make sure that you put this symbol on the bottoms of, on, on all of your plastic, so that people know that it's recyclable." Well, then they decided that they were going to put all of these symbols, not only the symbols, but they were going to put all of these numbers. Now, how many of you had any idea what any of those numbers meant? I had no idea what any of these, num these numbers meant. I just saw the little recycle thing and thought, okay, this is recyclable, and it goes in the recycle. No. They put these little numbers in, and what these numbers are is what... The, the makeup of it, of the plastic. So it tells you there's a lot of it that's mixed plastic. There's a lot of different chemicals that go into making that plastic. And so that's, it just confused us. And they said, in theory, technically, all of this stuff can be re recycled. Technically. It can all be recycled. The thing is, what they don't tell you is that a lot of this stuff, it's not cost effective. The, the process and the chemical production of actually breaking this down to recycle it, part of it, part of it, the, that technology hasn't been perfected, so it doesn't really happen. And part of it, 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 it costs too much because unless it's not going to be recycled unless somebody can make a profit from it. That's, that's the whole point. That's what it all comes down to, is unless someone can make a profit from recycling it, it's going to go in the landfill. Oops. Okay, so one of the things that I want you to remember is this question. Who wins when we waste? And who loses when we reuse? So that's what happened. So now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, they've started this reuse program where we're still going to be buying all this plastic. And but 
we're patting, our, patting ourselves on the back because by golly, we're recycling it, and so we're doing our part, and they get to continue to make as much plastic and make all their profits. And right now, the big oil companies and the plastic companies are making record profits making plastic. So that gives you some idea of, of what's actually happening. They're making these, we talked about the big cracker plants that are going, billion dollar cracker plants that are going in and making tons and tons and tons of, of this plastic and they're continuing to make it and making record profits. And then they're telling us, well, just recycle it and everything's good. Huh. Right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So with big oil doing all of this, then all of a sudden people are recycling and the trash companies are coming in and going, wait a minute, now we're losing profits because people are recycling and they're throwing all of this stuff in the, in the recycle bins and then we're not getting as much trash. So our profit shares are going down. So they think, well, okay, we're gonna get involved in, in the recycling program. And it started out great with, with where it, the truck would come to, your, come to your door and they had different bins for different types of recycling. You know, plastic in one bin, they had metal in another bin, paper in another bin, plastic in another bin, which is great. That's how it should be. But then they realized that that's not cost effective either. It co it's, it's too labor intensive and it just costs too much. It takes too much time, it costs too much. So, so it went to um, single stream. So, you know, all of, the, all of the recycled companies now have single stream. They give you this big barrel. They say, yeah, we're gonna do recycling. They give you this big barrel, put it in your house. Great, throw everything in this, everything in all of your recycling into this one can. Then they come and they get it, they throw it in the recycle, and then it goes and it's sorted. The problem is a lot of it is contaminated. If you put the wrong, the wrong plastics in there, if it's not cleaned out. Um, I know that here in, in Springfield, you can't put glass in the recycling anymore in the single bins because it, it broke. I mean, they tried to say, no, it would be fine, put it all in there, it won't break. But the glass broke and then it contaminated everything else in there. If you don't wash, if things are not washed out well, if you have tin cans or, or plastic recycling and they're not, they're not washed out properly, it contaminates everything that's in there. So everything in that gets put into the landfill. And with single stream recycling, about 80% of it goes into the landfill. That's a, that's a huge amount when we all think we're doing the right thing and, and recycling. So, um, let's see. So, at some point, the, the plastics industry also realized that they were having, a, they were having an image problem. And, and I don't know if you guys remember, um, they had this big promotion. I had all of these, this big ad campaign. They spent millions and millions of dollars on this ad campaign showing plastics and how much plastics made our lives safer, how much, how much more convenient the plastics were and how great all of this stuff was. Well, their, their approval level was at 30% before they started this ad campaign. And then it moved up to mid 60s percent because of this ad campaign. And I tell you this because I want you to watch when you're seeing ads, what a, what a huge, they call it, it's called greenwashing, is what it is. Is, by golly, you know, we're doing great things. Look at all of the wonderful things we're doing. We're, we're, we're making these pro products that are recyclable, and you guys are recycling, everything's great. And it's greenwashing because it's not really happening because 80% of it's still going into the landfill. Yeah. Oh. Hang on. Grab a, grab a mic. Just so the people online can hear you. Yeah, I just wanted to comment about the fact that it's complex and uh, thorny because actually the oil companies do produce the plastic that makes the tubing that is saving lives in the medical industry. So it's, you know, we have to be careful that we don't 
say it's all bad, that they're all bad. They aren't all bad, but there's a whole a lot more of it that's bad that's bad than it than there is that's good. Because obviously they're what's their bottom line? They're looking at their accounting department. Are we making the proper amount of profits? And if so, what can we do to change it? And we don't really honestly they aren't really thinking of the consumer when they're thinking of changing. Right. Thinking of the world. They're not thinking of the of polluting our world too. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Anybody else? Um, I had a quick comment while I'm walking over to give the mic to somebody else. Um, so in a lot of our, when we recycle, a lot of it is contracted with other countries like China, and it ends up in landfills anyway. Right. We, just, we just contract with them to ship over our, our recycling. I know Canada is, Canada, uh, China actually said that they're not going to accept any more of their recycling. Um, they did ours too. In 2013, oh, did they do ours too? 2013, yeah. okay. China said, yeah, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. After they were dumping it in the ocean. After they were right. dumping it in the ocean, correct. Wow. I forgot about that. Um, on the medical, I was in the hospital for something, and I was appalled at how much stuff that they have now mm -hmm. that is disposable. Yep. And all of the tubes, um, what are those? Stethoscopes. Everything is all disposable now. Yeah. We're, we're addicted to convenience. I was like, it, it's ridiculous the amount of, of stuff that goes in the landfill from hospitals. And, and it's under, a lot of that is under the, the pretense of sterilization. Uh -huh. Right. You know, it, it's sanitary. And some of it, absolutely, you can't, you can't, you can't clean it, and you can't reuse it. Um, but there are, there are a lot of things that, that the, the companies, that the hospitals used to sterilize and, and reuse. And it's just much more convenient now, and it's more, more profitable because they are able to charge you this exorbitant amount of, of money, and the insurance companies, this exorbitant amount of money, to for an item that you use once and then you throw it right. away. I was just gonna throw in that was one bandwagon they were able to get on during COVID. Because then they could say, well we don't want this, you know, contaminate to another person. So that's it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I looked at the city of Springfield and um Republic Services, I didn't realize Republic Services is one of the big companies in, in the city of Springfield. They're a nation, national company. They're one of the top three um, wow. waste companies in the United States. And, and like I said, their profit levels are just astronomical. So do you have any idea how many just trash companies we have in Springfield? Doesn't. That, does, that doesn't include that doesn't include just the ones that pick up junk and, and have the big bins that they roll off that you can use. We have, there were eight that I found on Google. Wow. So stop and think about not, um, I can't remember who it was, said that the, this was the only city that she had ever been in that the city didn't provide trash. Mm -hmm. That we have all of these different companies that come in and do trash. So you stop and you think about. Oh, Clay, go ahead. Oh, Clay. Uh, there you go. I've lived in Monette, for example, and when I lived there, the trash service was part of. You know, you got charged for it with your utility bill. Right. There's no reason that we can't do that here, and that would cause a lot less problems with. The squabbling, for example, in different neighborhoods over, hey, do we want to go with this company or that one? Mm -hmm. You know, it's all like my brother-in-law worked for this one or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the other part of the recycling thing is I remember years ago when there were more like about 20, uh, a bunch of the little mom and pop trash removal services were run out by these bigger companies. Right. So, you know, that's another thing that's, in my, I just feel that that's not good for 
commerce in general to push out all of the little guys just because they can. Sure, and you, and you know it, it it makes me stop and think. Okay, what do the trash service companies offer Springfield in order to come in and right and be able to have a monopoly and bring their services in as opposed to the city doing that? So environmentally you stop and you look at the impact that that has on our that that has on our city stop and think about in in my neighborhood i'm i can think of at least five different barrels that i see in my in my neighborhood when we take a walk of different companies that means that there are five different trash trucks coming into our neighborhoods all the time to every week, we have five different trash trucks that are coming in. Those that do that offer recycling, we have that. We have they're coming in twice. We have two different mm -hmm. trucks that are coming in to pick up our recycling, and then another truck to pick up our trash. Imagine the impact. We know from our parking lot how big those big heavy trash trucks. What an impact that has on our parking lot. Our parking lot is just wavy and it's just a mess because of those trash trucks coming up onto our parking lot. So imagine the impact that has on the streets every day. Not to mention the, the carbon emissions right. from those trucks every every single day coming into our, community, into our communities. So we have that environment impact on it. Not to mention, like I said, the greenwashing. All of these companies that say this are recycling, but then we find out what's really happening is most of it is going to the landfill. So, what I want to encourage is that we all start using, um, stop using this single stream. We we stopped using it. We didn't know. We we didn't have this information. So we were we were throwing everything in into the big the barrel and putting it out on the curb. You know, my wife still she was skeptical. She kept saying, "Yeah, yeah, I don't know where this is really going. I'm not sure I believe that this is really being recycled." Um, but we're addicted to convenience, so we we did it. We did it that way anyway. And then Louise Mann came in and talked to us about what was really happening. And we said, "That's it. We're not doing it anymore." So we got bins in our house, and we put all of our recycling in each one in a different bin. So, um, and then we we'll take it to the drop-off center. Now there are, are several drop-off centers. Yeah, go ahead. Isn't there one? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh. It, it seems to me like I use, I've used that Franklin Street one Avenue one, and it seems like there's one category of recyclables that they won't accept, but I don't remember what it is. Is that true? Um, it tells down here at the bottom. It gives all of the information about what they, they do. Aluminum, cardboard, glass, paper, plastic, tin, and yard waste. Okay, this one, you can't one. do, you can't bring, like if you, you can't bring a whole <coughs> bunch of yard waste. You can bring small amounts. But you can do um, but you can't, you can't, if you're, if that's your business, you can't use that one or the one down here on the line for or to, for yard waste. That would be too there, much. There's a certain amount of bags that you can bring for those. If you want, if you have a ton of yard waste that you need to use, let me get my bearings where, which way I'm facing. It's yes, west. thank you. Yes, out west um, is if you're on your way to Republic. There's a big power plant out there you can see, and they they have a yard waste area out there. That's, I mean, it's huge. Yes, Greg. A lot of local market garden farms would also happily accept yard waste for their composting piles, and so if you need resources on that or anything, it, uh, the, the local farmers market, you could just walk around and be like, hey, you guys take. <laughs> Dump off some leaves and wood chips and, and whatever really it is. Fun. I mean, happily. I mean, they go they go looking for it. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with same thing with compost. We have a lot of we had a um, a lot of farms that are going to take their compost uh, to use. Some of it they use to feed their pigs or air, and then some of the compost they also use um, 
on their farms. And so that's also, that's something you can also look at. Thank you Greg for that. Yeah. Um, and going to the farmer's markets with that. So, um, so there's also one down here on Lone Pine, just on the other side of Battlefield Pavilion. And so um, they are there from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And they're closed on all of the federal holidays. If the banks are closed, they're not going to be there either. Um, they, like I said, they accept tin, yard waste, um, holiday decor. So if you have a real Christmas tree or a wreath or whatever, they will take those. And you make sure you take everything off of it. There's also the this HCCC is a household household for household chemicals. Oh yeah. And so there's they have a place where you can take different set, different household chemicals. Um, and I don't think Franklin Avenue is open till till five. I think they close at four thirty. Okay. I I would this check this work. Yeah. I think I've been there at, as they were closing. And They change their hours in the year, throughout the year sometimes. Yeah, I, and I think, I know in the, that we've had um, summer hours right. and oh, yeah. winter hours, but I don't think we don't, we don't do that anymore. I don't think so. The signs still say five. Okay, that's good. It says five online, too. Okay, so I came across this article about the city of Springfield. And it said, Springfield Recycling Center is now narrowing the kinds of plastic accepted at its facility. Most plastic items are labeled with the number one through seven. This label indicates the chem chemical composition and complexity of the plastic to manufacturers and recycling providers. The Springfield Recycling Center is now only accepting numbers one, two, and five plastics. So anything else, any of the other plastics, there's not a market for them. You know, it, that's that's what it what it comes down to is that there's not a market for the plastic to to go to. They're not going to take it as recycling. Okay, so number one, plastics are made from polyethylene. I'm not even going to try. Them. Anybody else want to try and use nope. that word? Terephthalate. <laughs> All right, we'll go with that. And, and which is mostly soda bottles, water bottles, and things like that. So I brought, let me make sure I don't pull that out. I brought some things, these are number one, okay? Um, ketchup bottle, okay? Now, most of the stuff, I, I talked to my, my Sue about it, we had a conversation, and most of the things that we get are, are organic. So I think organic companies will tend to use things that are, definitely use things that are recyclable. I don't know about things that are not, that are not organic. I'm not sure if they're still gonna use that same type of plastic. So make sure when, when you go to the store to buy things, it's great if you can buy things in glass. Glass is indefinitely recyclable. You can, you can recycle glass over and over and over again. So it's indefinite, in, that's not the right word. Infinitely. Thank you, infinitely recyclable. That's the other right. thing about glass is, it's safe to reuse. Yes. If you yeah. wash it. Yes. Right. Yes, and there are, there are a lot of things with glass that you can take in, like, like the milk, this milk bottle, okay? We buy our milk in glass, and then you take this back to the market, and they'll take this. They'll take it back, and they re, they will um, reuse it. They have the bottles on it too. Yeah, they always have. I think so. Well, you pay for it when you buy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then, and then, but then you take it back, and then they're going they're going to reuse it. Okay. So, um, like I said, if you can if you can buy in glass, then then use glass. Ketchup. I'm not a big person. I don't eat a lot of ketchup. You know, you could probably <laughs> put the amount of ketchup I use in a year in a little cup like this. You know, I, I don't use a lot of ketchup unless Sue makes the ketchup. And if Sue makes the ketchup, then I will. I'm more inclined to eat it. So if you want a recipe for making ketchup, let me know, and I can. 
trying to convince her to write down other than it's like, well, I just put a little bit of this in there, you know. Uh, or if so, if you use it, if you do happen to make it, reuse a bottle that you already have, or reuse a glass bottle, um, water bottles, milk jugs, Gatorade bottles. Um, I listened to something, and they were talking about in Oregon that this was a few years ago. That something, something like this, this had blueberries in it. There wasn't a market for it, but this is a number one, so that we know in the city of Springfield they're going to take this, and this is going to be recycled. Um, I was a little surprised to see that this was recycled. This is a number one, also. Um, if you get, if you get a chicken. The top, of it, the top of it will recycle. However, I just learned from Linda last week that black plastic is no longer recyclable. Why? Why? It's recyclable. It's recyclable. They won't accept it because it contaminates the batch of Here, water. Hang on. Yeah. It what? Take that, get the microphone. <clears throat> Even if your black plastic <clears throat> excuse me, says it's a number one tier five, Springfield will not take it because the market that they have selling their plastic to you mostly makes the clear plastic and the black will contaminate it. So they uh -huh. toss it out when it goes to the sorting center. Okay, so that's here in Springfield. So black plastic and not recycled here in Springfield. Well, that's racist. So, well, you know, and, and it, kind of make, and it kind of makes me wonder why do they make it? Right. Yeah. You know, if, if, if there's not, if there's not going to be a market for it, Yes, stop it, making it's it. It's going to make it tougher, tougher for the market. They don't they can. care. Mm. Is that <laughs> it's, it's, our, it's our issue. Um, this had cookies in it. And this is a, this is the number one. So what what I'm really encouraging you to do when you go to the market, don't just don't just grab something. Oh, I need I need this and grab this off the shelf. Take a look at it and see whether what you're what you're Purchasing, if the container that's in is, in, is recyclable, when you go, um, all of our little, all of our little uh, supplements mm -hmm. are these are all number one. Oh, also, so these are these are going to recycle. Um, I have a thought. Anybody see it? It just went that way. <laughs> Nope. I feel, okay. it, I feel I it, but I don't know what it was. Don't know what it was? Okay. I don't know what it was either. But take a look at, take a look at those. When you go, uh, you look in the produce, produce section now. And lettuce is in plastic containers. Well, okay, they may be, it may be recyclable. But, again, that's not the point. You know, we, we, we have to get away from, as a society, we have to get, get away from that mindset that it's okay if we buy this because it's recyclable. Because it's not just about recycling it and, and reusing it. it, it's about the process of it. It's about all of these cracker plants that are going into poor neighborhoods and polluting those neighborhoods and, and releasing chemicals in these neighborhoods, uh, people who can't afford to do anything different and are, are desperate for jobs, and they're getting sick because of all of these chemicals that are being produced and, and pushed into their communities. It's about all of the resources that they use in order to, to make these products in the first place. Remember I, I said last week, it takes 1,200 gallons of water to make a pair of jeans. 1,200 gallons of water, and how many states in the United States right now are really struggling because they're having sh shortages of water, and they're having they're having to limit the amount of water that can be used. But we're using 1,200 gallons of water to make a pair of jeans. So it, it's about it's about what happens to to and the resources that it takes in order to make these products in the first place. Um, somebody said something about last week about not feeling bad about using paper towels because, you know, they'll break down in a landfill. True, paper, a, paper, a newspaper will break down in a landfill, but my friend Linda Kittle reminded me that, sure, if you take a, a newspaper and you throw it in your backyard, within a few months it's gonna break down. Sorry, Pat, I am gonna get to you. 
it is going to break down. But if it's 10 feet deep in a landfill, if you, 10 years later, if you dig a big hole, that newspaper is still going to be there. Right. So. It has to have oxidation. Right. Have, I, I was going to get you to make comments. Now. Well, go ahead. What do you want to say? I just want to say I've been recycling for a long time, and even when I taught eighth graders, I taught them all about it. So it's important to do that and let people know what's going on and what they shouldn't should do. So that's all I was going to say. Okay. You're right. I'm struggling with how to fit this in a metaphysical framework because this is not, Abraham is, is teaching to be very aware of your emotions and how you're feeling. And I'm struggling with feeling. I recycle and I don't have a problem with that. I don't want them to initiate trash service because I don't, have trash service. I, I don't have more than a half a Walmart bag every two or three weeks that I don't either burn or recycle or, you know, repurpose. Um, but from a metaphysical aspect, how do we approach this I guess I'm really struggling with my feelings right now because I'm I'm not feeling happy and joyful. And so how do you approach this from a unity perspective? John. My, my response to that, LB, is that what makes me feel like empowered is that if we stop buying the stuff, They'll stop making it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're doing, they figure, well, if we make it, you know, they're like feel the dreams. If we make it, it'll, they'll come back. And our choice is to say, you know, look, if we stop buying things that are in plastic at any time that we can, I mean, there's some things like flexible tubing and things like that where plastic is, is more, makes more sense than trying to make things out of metal or glass. But if, if whenever there's a choice, it's just being cognizant and aware. For instance, salad. You can just buy salad loose leaf. <laughs> you don't know, need that plastic on it. You know, you can buy things with, without containers and, yeah, and just go out of your way to do that as much as possible and they start, they'll, they'll count the profit. They'll count the money for and it. And it's you can guarantee that. And it's absolutely That's true. Right. Because you look at you look at it matters. When when we, we when we make a different choice, it matters. And I and I hear you, LB, and and um, and I hear you. I think it's important sometimes I think it's important to get the information out here though, because there's so much there has been so much greenwashing that's taken place. And I think it's important for us to understand what's behind some of this and that we can't just pat ourselves on the back and say, yes, we're recycling, it's all good. Because it's not, because that's what's been happening for the last 50 years. And here, this is where we are. I think sometimes sometimes we need a cosmic two before to, to wake us up and go, wait a minute, this is not working. Why isn't this working? And what can we do differently to switch, change our mindset? What can we do differently to make this different and make this different for, for now and for the future? And so I think and that's what I'm trying to do. That's the information that I'm trying to give you. So from a metaphysical perspective, you know, metaphysics is about elevating our consciousness, which means that we have to see what's what's going on, you know, to be able to elevate our consciousness. So, and I think, you know, finding out that we're destroying the planet, the natural response is, oh no, this doesn't feel good. 
And then we take that and we can use recycling as a form of mindfulness and, and begin to recognize how we're engaging with the world around us. I mean, that's certainly metaphysical. You know, I, metaphysics is not about avoiding negative emotion. Um, you know, whatever we put out into the universe comes back to us. And so if, we're, if we want to shield ourselves from any negative feeling, we're just remaining in a state of, you know, and we just want to ignore bad things. That's not metaphysical, because all we're doing is we're creating more ignorance in the world. So I think this is a good opportunity for us to elevate our consciousness regarding how our behaviors impact the world. And, and, we, can, and we can joyfully recycle. We can joyfully reuse. We can, we can increase consciousness related to these topics. One of my struggles that I have is that a lot of apartment complexes don't do this at all. And I'm actually happy to, to be in one of them. So like if someone were to come in and was never taught about recycling, what would you say is the most important thing to do and like maybe have your neighbors do with you? So I think the the most the most important thing is to not use as much. You don't have to you don't have to recycle waste that you don't Conscious create. consumerism. Yes, conscious consumerism. So look at what you're buying. Like I said, buy in plastic. Unless it's absolute, unless it's necessary to to buy things, um, tin is infinitely recyclable. Glass is infinitely recyclable. Aluminum is infinitely recyclable. These are things that if you buy if you buy products in those things, you can recycle those infinitely. And then make more, make different products, or then reuse those to make the same product over again. So use those when you can, instead of using something that's going to go in the landfill. If you are going to recycle, change, uh, separate it. Don't put it all together. Um, separate it out and and take it to the drop off centers. So they could, you know, if I I've got some slides in here that tell you. Um, okay, so there's number two. Milk jugs um, are number two. Let me go. Let me go through with this one. Milk jugs. Um, the your your jugs sometimes that your your laundry detergent things go in. Make sure that you are washing these things out really really well. If you don't wash them out, they're going to contaminate the plastic, and then it'll and it's all going to have to go, and, and it all ends up in the landfill. But make sure you look at it and see what it is in Springfield. One, two, and five. If it's not a one, a two, or a five, it's not going to recycle. Okay. So when you when you buy things, look for those things. Um, recycle your paper separately. Your paper, your tin and metal, your aluminum, your your plastic, your glass. Recycle recycle those things separately. Put them in separate bins. So that they're not contaminating each other, and then take those and take that your recycling to a drop-off center. That's that's what I would I would say to, to people who are wanting to recycle. Um, number five, plastic. Coming on. Number five, plastic is things like your yogurt containers, um, your your sour cream. Your cottage cheese containers. These containers right here. These will recycle. The thing is, oh, did you see those nice lightning catch. fast reflexes? Exactly. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, we use these over and over and over again before we recycle them. For right. Our storage containers. We we buy if we have to buy it. We buy we buy glass storage containers. But we'll use these over and over again as as storage containers to, you know, to, to put stuff in the refrigerator or whatever ever before, before we recycle it. But these are, these are the things that are number fives. One of the other things that I wanted, how many of us remember, we never used anything but this when I was growing up. This, was, this was the way orange juice came. Was in these. I don't think I've seen that in 20 years. I know, right? Yeah, they you get that on Antiques offer, Roadshow? I know. They still <laughs> offer it this way. But how many of us actually went to us? That's all you could get yeah. then. How many, how many of us actually use this instead of buying a jug of ready made orange juice? It's less expensive, for one thing. Huh. And then when you get this, the outside 
we go in, in what's that called? It's not the corrugated plastic. Oh, it's the, the paper. The paper. And this will go in the paper. And then on the bottom is a little tin, a tin that goes in the tin. But then there's a lining in there that I'm not sure that the it's slick, so yeah. um, so that things don't stick to it and it doesn't leach through. The liquid doesn't leach through. So this goes in the trash. But the rest of this, all of the rest of this is recyclable. Okay. But I have to so stir it up. I know. I have the right? water. <laughs> and then I looked at this. This is a number three. It doesn't recycle. No. Here in Springfield, this will not recycle, and I'm not sure. And 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 it looks just it looks they look the same, right? Yeah. What is that? But, but there's a different composition. This is a number three, so the composition of this. Yeah, but what was what it? stored in it? The cupcakes, or oh, little cupcakes. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. Um, but this won't recycle in the city of Springfield. So it, remember, the numbers are all about the chemical composition and what it's going to take to break this down and recycle it and whether there's actually a market for it. Yes, Sarah? You keep talking about the city of Springfield. Is Like Nixa, we have Repellent Crash Service, and that's who we recycle through. And that's the single stream that I'm talking about, where you okay. put the barrel yeah. out, because that's, that's who we had also. Is that who will not recycle threes and whatever else? Do you know about that? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what what Republic Services does with their recycling. I know that when you do it that way with the, the single stream, a lot of it is contaminated. Even if you wash all of your stuff out, other people don't, and other people don't, and it's all going in the same trash bin. The trash. The same trash truck, when it gets there, it's all going into the same area. So even if you do what you're supposed to do, there are going to be a lot of people that are not doing what they're supposed to be. And then all of that is contaminated, and 80% of it is going to go in, in the landfill. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, another big player in Springfield that whenever I was married, our household used waste management. And they're mm -hmm. a huge... Right. Uh, they're, probably they're also, an international yeah, they're, company. Yeah, they're also one of the top three um, right. in waste the, companies in, in the, the USA. States. Yeah. Well, the, I wanted to make a, sep a different comment because you got my attention when you said it takes 1,200 gallons of water to make a pair of jeans. I know, right? And I got to thinking about it. Uh, my, my mother just recently passed away. Well, guess what? She can make garments with her loom straight from the animal you know she would get the wool she would spin it she had a spinner you know we need to take a tip from our ancestors go <laughs> buy a spinner spin it in the yarn buy a loom get the learn the skill of weaving and you know you are that's the ultimate thing you don't have to use any water to make a garment from that well and and you know more likely for all of us than doing that it is buy second hand when it comes yeah. to clothing. Buy second hand. Um, the fast fashion industry is producing s a, over a billion garments daily. Right. That's there scary. Was, there was a, a, they talked about the H&M company. The H&M company, which is the merchandise they sell clothing. Um, they put out new products Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Every week they put out new Good. products. Can you imagine how many different pieces of clothing that is? Just that yeah. one store. So buy second hand. Wear your stuff until it wears out. You know, the, fa the fast fashion industry has convinced us as consumers that we have to have the latest fashion, and oh man, if you're wearing last year's stuff, you know these these influencers on on social media are convinced have convinced us that you got to have the latest fashion because if you're not wearing the latest fashion, who you're not going to fit in, you know, and it's human nature that we want to fit in, we want to be part of the clan. So there, all the advertising has convinced us of that, but it's not true. We as consumers can change that and make that different. So I'm sitting here and I'm holding these jars. So we we use 
mason jars for all kinds of stuff. Um, for, for storage, you drink out of the small ones, and, and you know, even how many people have had an ant problem or had an ant problem? Oh, big <laughs> oh my gosh, the ants are terrible. Mason jars will keep the ants out of whatever it is that you have. We take our honey bar jar and stick it in a mason jar because man, boy, the, the ants will find that honey bar. I don't care where you put it, they're going to find it. But we put it in the mason jar so that they can't find it. Um, reused bottles, in the, and especially in the summertime, more so than in the winter, because they, if you put them in the car and they freeze. Um, and break. But we, and break, yeah. Um, but we use these for, to put water in, for drinks, or anything else that you want. You, you can always use these, and we're going to have these at Planet Unity. We're going to have those available to, to buy. They've got really cool little things etched on them. Okay. Um, so basically, what this is saying is, is, is telling us about the con contamination and what they're doing. And basically, that there's not a market for it. It was, it was the reason that they made the changes in this, because there was not a market for it. Okay. Um, they're also, they will not be taking hardback books at the recycle, at the recycle center. I think you can take the covers off of them and just take the pages, cut the pages out, and you can take still take that, but they're not going to take the hard hardback books together. So we've talked about this already. Make sure that you rinse out any plastic item, tin cans, all of your recycling. Rinse it out really good, and when you're going, oh my gosh, this is heavy. We are addicted to con convenience. Mm -hmm. Remember. That if you put that in there without rinsing it out and it's got contamination in it, everything else is going to be contaminated and it's going to go to the landfill. So that convinces me to take that extra few minutes and make sure that you that you rinse everything out. Look at the bottom, find out what the number is, make sure it's a one, two, or a five in the city of Springfield. If it's not, it's not going to recycle. And then make sure that you put them in the correct bin. Oh, I did want to say that um, currently 70% of all waste going into the Springfield landfill mm -hmm. could be recycled. Wow. And I saw that and I thought, 70%? Is that really true? But you stop and you think about how much, how much we get rid of that we throw away that we don't really need to throw away. A lamp that, that needs a new cord on it. Or, you know, all of the things that we're just like, yeah, and we just toss it instead of trying to fix it or repurpose it or re reuse it. Give it to somebody else who can fix it. You know, or all of our clothing. Throw it out and, and buy new instead of taking it to the and take it to the purple bins that are on, on price cutter parking lots. They take that, they sell it to the thrift stores, but they can't sell it and the profits go to the Big Brothers Big Sisters program, but they can't sell to the, to, um, the thrift stores. Now I'm questioning this after I after I got all this information. Goes to other countries where where they they will redo it. Although now, I'm, like I said, I'm questioning because it's going to other countries, and what are they doing with it? Um, we don't. They don't throw any of it in the landfill here in. in the United States, none of it goes in the landfill. Okay, so real quick, let me see. So for Springfield, our glass goes to Ripple City Glass, or to Kansas City to Ripple Glass. They're gonna take it to Owens Corning has it. They're gonna make pink panther fiberglass that you see on the construction sites, or they're gonna make new bottles and new beverage containers with it. Ten steel and commercial metals, stays here locally in Springfield. They take all of that and then they process it and market it to companies that recycle it into new aluminum and steel products. The plastics, uh, New American Recycling has the plastic and it processed and marketed to companies that man manufacture products like clothing, carpet, composite, com composite. composite, thank you, composite decking and other building materials and consumer products. Cardboard, you notice all of the big, the big 
um, box chains and everything, they, they keep their product, their, their cardboard, because there's a market for it. There's, there's money in it. Um, but New American Recycling takes the, the cardboard from the drop-off centers, and they make products like the, the box board for cereal boxes and things like that, and other containing. And our mixed paper, New American Recycling also takes that, and it's recycled here in, in, in Springfield. So newspapers, office paper, magazines, junk mail, paperboard containers like cereal, tissue, cracker, and pasta boxes, paper towel tubes, toilet paper tubes, um, don't put it in plastic to take it there and, and throw a plastic bag in there. Corrugated, if you look at it and it's got the little corrugation, the, the little lines in it, then that's corrugated cardboard that goes differently. If you're not sure if it, if it will recycle, there's this um, website called Waste Wizard. You can call them or you can look on their website and it will tell you and find out. You can ask them about it and it will tell you whether or not it can be recycled. And then here is the household chemical where that is. So I'm going through this really fast. The story of stuff, I talked about that. It's a 20 minute video. You can get it on YouTube. I really highly encourage you to, to watch that. It's um, got all kinds of amazing information in it. And also remember that waste reduction is even better than recycling. But please also remember, and this is what I want to leave you with, there is no away. When we throw things away, there is no away. Huh. It's still here. Mm -hmm. Could you restate that uh, show that you, or the... Stuff. The one that you started with, the story, of stuff. Of the story, story of, of stuff, not the story of stuff, the one that uh, was PBS wars. and Plastic Wars, Plastic the wars. Of, yeah. the doc, the, about documentary, yeah. a documentary called Plastic Wars. I've seen it, it's really interesting. Okay, and then I'm going to leave you with these, because I always do. This is my granddaughter, Carla oh. Grace. She's 15 months old. She's lovely. And then her, this is her with her, her brother, big brother, Julian, who is seven, those are all grandkids. Serena's. Those are, so Those are Serena's kids. Selena, yes. Selena, Selena, I mean, yeah, yeah. Selena and Beckham's kids. Beautiful. All right. We have Anybody else have anything? Oh. All right, we have some announcements. Yes, Thank you guys all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John has some announcements. So, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, Tonight is the second session of James Masters' Let There Be Light mm -hmm. Spirit Group. Newcomers are still welcome. On April 15th at 10 a.m., there will be a massive recycling effort here at the church. A $5 minimum love offering is requested per box for the shred truck. We will also have free electronic recycling. A detailed list of what can be recycled is available in your e-blast and posted in the hallway by the reception desk. Please. Please pass that around to everybody that you know so we can have a big turnout for that. What day of the week is that? It's Saturday the 15th, okay. next Saturday. Saturday the 15th. There will also be a free metal recycling on April 15th. All metal frames, appliances, except those containing Freon or gasoline, are welcome. The pod is here to receive your donations for the indoor yard sale during the planning meeting. No clothing or large furniture for the sale. The pod is unlocked Sunday mornings, Monday through Thursday, 10 to 4, and by appointment. Next Sunday after the service, we need volunteers to clear the sanctuary and empty the pod so setup can begin for the yard wow. sale. Already. Volunteers are key to the success for the planet. <laughs> Please sign up for a shift in the foyer. The New Thought World Religion class on April 16th, Amy Burnett will be discussing Michael Singer's Living Untethered. I'm excited about it. Me too. More about it. Great book. Beginning Mondays, April 17th, in a collaboration with Rhythm Without Borders, Neil Landau will be offering beginning to an intermediate West African drumming oh lessons at 7 p.m. The first month of lessons is free to participants. Starting May 1st, the sanctuary will be open for meditation from 6 to 8 a.m., Monday through Friday, and welcomes everyone. James Masters and Bobby Delmar are overseeing the meditation. 
Ladies, save the date. The Spring Fashion Boutique is coming up May 5th and 6th. Clean your closets. Your gently used clothing is now being accepted. Don't forget to stay after the service and enjoy the Easter egg hunt. And then you won't have to be buying brand new, latest fashions that uh, someone so just made up. Uh, exactly. All right, so thanks everybody, and we'll go ahead and gather. Music